This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain an action sci-fi horror film called Cold Skin. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. We are never very far from those we hate. For this very reason, we shall never be truly close to those we love. The haunting thoughts of the young Englishman go on and on as he sets sail for a remote South Atlantic island to work as a meteorologist. While his thoughts drown him down, Captain Axel approaches him and lights a cigarette, telling him that they're almost there. In September 1914, they finally arrive on the island, where no one greets them. The man had been sent to replace another meteorologist stationed at the island, but there seems to be no sign of anyone. Captain Axel accompanies the young man to look for the previous meteorologist to ensure he's safe. They come across a lighthouse and knock on it, but no one answers. The young man forces the door open and finds the only other person on the island, Gruner, the signal technician, who greets them both coldly. When Captain Axel asks about the former weather official, Gruner answers that the man they are looking for died from typhus. Gruner seems unbothered by their presence and walks around nude. Irritated, Captain Axel and the young man leave the lighthouse. When Captain Axel bids him goodbye, the man wanders around the island as he deems life ahead of him there. Like the previous weather official, he must dwell into the intensity and direction of the winds for 12 months before someone replaces him. When he returns to the cabin to fix his things, he finds the previous meteorologist's diary, revealing his name as Aldor. Inside, he sees sketches, a photograph of Aldor's wife, and even a lighthouse drawing with strange creatures beside it. The next morning, he finds strange rock circles on the sand. He then heads near the coast with a telescope to start work. As he peeks through the binoculars, he sees the naked man doing a stretch as preparation for a long day of doing nothing. That night, while he's reading, he hears rustling outside his door, to which he thinks is Gruner. However, the noises get louder and louder with scratching and growling sonances. Then suddenly, a reptilian hand appears at the bottom of the door, which he immediately steps on, causing the unknown creature to get agitated. When he hears more, he hides under the floorboards while they try to enter his cabin. They attack his place, but notice that there's no one inside. When the footsteps stop, he looks through a small hole in the floorboard's door. The creature peeps through as well, causing him to poke its eye with a knife. Feeling afraid, he locks himself underground for the whole night. He calls Gruner the next day, pleading to be led into the lighthouse, but Gruner refuses. Determined to fight, he heads back home and spends the whole day reinforcing it. With a newfound rifle among the baggage of the cabin, the man feels ready to fight against the unknown monsters. The night comes and the swarm of beasts start appearing from the darkness, slowly approaching the cabin. He braces himself as he shoots them one by one. He eventually has no choice but to start a fire since there are simply too many to handle. The fire makes them flee, but it burns the cabin. He runs away from his burning house. Fortunately, it rains before the cabin completely burns down. The following day, he sees Gruner leave the lighthouse and discreetly follows him down to the rocks. When he is about to ambush Gruner, a blue female sea creature attacks him and he points his gun at her. Gruner stops him from shooting her by showing she is vulnerable. The young man takes advantage of offering Gruner some of his supplies in return for shelter. Gruner then calls the man a friend for the sea creature to acknowledge him as one. A little while later, they head into Friend's cabin to gather his supplies. He realizes that the previous weather official didn't die from typhus, but from the sea creatures. However, Gruner tells him that they need to head back to the lighthouse since it's nearing sunset, and the creatures might attack. They lift the supplies into the beacon, and after a long walk, Friend passes out. One morning, Friend is awakened by the female sea creature licking his hand, trying to heal his burns. It turns out that he's been asleep for two days. Friend then finds Gruner and takes an inventory of their ammunition and explains to him that the creature, which he calls a toad, is like a dog who will not abandon her master no matter how cruel he is. Friend gazes at awe in her, fascinated by her existence, giving her the impression that she's different from the others. However, Gruner warns him not to trust her entirely, believing that her silent and calm personality hides evil intentions. Gruner then shows Friend more of the lighthouse and takes him up to the top. Friend wonders why Gruner chose to stay on the island when he had the opportunity to leave when Friend arrived. However, Gruner tells him that he will never come back to the civilized world now that he is a master of his own destiny. Still, Friend tells Gruner that he will come aboard when he sees the next ship come by, to which Gruner wishes him good luck. Later that day, Friend contemplates how a few days of isolation recently had changed him. As he fixes his things, he's surprised by the creature's presence, but still, he observes her as she ignorantly eats a candle. As he's trying to explain to her the use of a candle, Gruner calls him up, commanding him to bring his rifle. That night, Fred watches Gruner as he prepares for the attack. 
The older man instructs him what to do and fires the flare gun, which signals the beginning of a long night. On the other hand, while the female creature wails into the sky, a crowd of sea creatures barrels towards them and Gruner starts shooting. However, Friend feels overwhelmed as he remains in his position and slowly walks backwards until he passes out. Gruner is left alone fighting the appalling swarm of sea monsters. The following day, Gruner is enraged at Friend's ineffectiveness, telling him to fetch water instead. Friend then gets the water, and when he comes back he hears a pounding and wailing in Gruner's room, and to his surprise, he sees Gruner thrusting himself into the sea creature. He then immediately leaves. Later that day, Gruner and Friend eat lunch in awkward silence. Friend cannot confront him as he feels guilty and uncomfortable at the same time. However, Gruner breaks the tension as he bangs the table, telling Friend that he only has one last chance left. That night, Gruner catches the attention of the creatures as he takes the flare gun. When the monsters appear, Friend is frightened again, causing Gruner to lock Friend outside on the balcony, leaving him to fend for himself against the monsters. Despite hearing gunshots and Friend's pleas outside, Gruner falls asleep. As the sun rises, Gruner is surprised to see Friend alive, covered in blood, gazing blankly at him. Months pass and the two men get into a routine when the creatures attack several nights in a row, forcing them to keep vigil. Days are always the same, nights are getting longer, and only nature keeps them sane. They manage to coexist, where Friend's everyday task is to fetch water while Gruner maintains their weapon. One day, Friend speculates that the creatures are returning to the lighthouse to reclaim the female sea creature. However, he still wonders why she allows her species to get killed and why they don't attack on some nights. Gruner doesn't care as to why the creatures come and plans to exterminate them all. Later on, Friend visits his old faded cabin to reclaim some of his belongings, only to discover how he has changed his appearance as he looks at himself in a mirror. He trims his beard, hoping to have some sense of his old self. On his way back to the lighthouse, he comes across a massive whale skeleton and picks up a piece. Still, there are no attacks that night, making him believe that the lulls between the fighting are often worse than the battles themselves. Still, they take advantage to prepare for the next attack. While Friend wanders around, he sees the creature and approaches her for the first time as he touches her cold skin. He grows to like the strange being and gives her the name Anaris. while Gruner uses her for his ends as a servant and sex slave. One evening, Gruner invites Friend to play chess. As they play, the young man shares his observations and hypothesis on the existence of the sea creatures. However, Gruner asks him to shut his mouth and play, urging Friend to perform a checkmate. Gruner then picks up his gun and points it towards the young man's direction as he perceives a creature behind his back. It turns out the sea monsters are already on the attack. They run into the higher point of the lighthouse as more and more monsters arrive. They fight with their rifles but are getting overwhelmed as the attack came too sudden. Still, they decide to go up to the lantern pane where the light illuminates. Unfortunately, Gruner is badly bitten on the foot as he flees upstairs after locking themselves inside the pane. They spend the night up there while the creatures try to reach them through the glass partition. Thinking that this is his end, Gruner sings a tragic love song until the sun rises and the monsters leave. That morning, Anaris takes care of Gruner's bitten foot as she sticks her tongue into the wound. They cannot survive another war as they are running out of supplies, ammunition, and will. Later that day, Friend perceives a ship from the distance while he roams. He immediately runs inside to get the flare gun. Afraid of having no one to hate, Gruner restrains Friend as he's about to shoot, pinning him to the ground. Anaris tries to protect Friend, which enrages Gruner, causing him to walk out with the flare gun. Feeling frustrated, Friend yells at Gruner, telling him that he's afraid to be left behind and fight alone. A little while later, Friend finds a way to communicate with Anaris by showing her a boat that he carved out of bone, hoping that she would understand. Anaris then leads him to an abandoned rowboat on the shore, away from the lighthouse. At the lighthouse, the young man tells Gruner about the boat, but Gruner says he knows about it, informing him that a Portuguese man used it to get away from a shipwreck, but the creatures killed him. He also claims that the ship's cargo contained dynamite, but he assumes that they're all waterlogged. Meanwhile, Friend is interested in diving into the shipwreck with an atmospheric diving suit, but Gruner disapproves, telling Friend that what he's proposing is a suicide mission. One afternoon, the young man paints the rowboat with hopes of making it work. He then hears a howling from the distance only to find Anaris enjoying a swim nearby. As he removes his clothes, he slowly approaches her as if he's going to kiss her. Unbeknownst to Friend and Anaris, Gruner is watching. Back at the lighthouse while Friend is reading a book, Gruner hands him a diving suit and changes his mind after witnessing what they did on the pool, secretly hoping that Friend will die in the attempt due to jealousy. 
The following day, they row out to the shipwreck using the boat. The young man explains a rope tug is their only way to communicate while friend is underwater, telling Gruner that he will tug the rope three times if he needs air supply. He then wears an old diving suit searching for the crates carrying dynamite while Gruner controls the string from the boat. While underwater, Friend finds the container and immediately hooks them up. After hooking up several small boxes, Friend finds an infant sea creature peeking through his suit, causing him to fall. He tugs the rope and starts to panic as more of the creatures surround him. Gruner is just watching the rope, on the verge of abandoning Friend. However, as the young man releases himself from the suit and swims up into the boat, where Gruner immediately helps him up. When they return home, they immediately check the crates and discover that only one box among the others contains explosives that are dry enough to use. The winter is coming. Friend and Gruner devise a plan to entice as many creatures as possible into the lighthouse before detonating the planted dynamite in hopes of scaring them away. However, that night, no one attacked. Three weeks pass in the blink of an eye and Gruner is getting impatient while waiting for the big attack. Friend finds Gruner freezing outside, still waiting in desperation for the creatures. Friend asks him to go inside and defuse the detonator for a while. One time, Friend and Gruner are waiting for Anaris' catch for their lunch. However, when Gruner discovers that she brings starfish instead of fish, he kicks her, also blaming her for telling her kind about their plan to scare them. The angry man grabs Friend's shirt, telling them that their new plan is to leave the door open, luring them inside for an ambush. That night, Friend leaves the door open while watching it. Gruner takes the upper ground, preparing to detonate the dynamite. They've been waiting for hours, and it seems like they're not going to attack them. Following Friend's speculation, Gruner drags Anaris beside him, forcing her to wail, assuming that it would attract the creatures. Meanwhile, a sea creature attacks Friend at the main door. He manages to get away from them, but more creatures are coming in. He rushes upstairs while informing Gruner that they're now inside the lighthouse. The creatures attack, but Gruner cannot detonate the explosives, causing Friend to sprint to the top of the lighthouse and reconnect the detonator. An explosion occurs, killing many sea creatures. Feeling unsatisfied, Gruner goes for a second set of explosives nearer to the lighthouse, knocking Friend and himself out. When Friend wakes up the following day, he immediately searches for Gruner and wakes him up. The young man is relieved when Gruner moves and starts singing a song, which he joins this time. Meanwhile, there is massive chaos around the beacon. Gruner uses a spear to finish off the wounded and dying toad on the beach. After seeing one of the dead creatures wearing a necklace, Friend believes that the species are more civilized than Gruner portrays them. Gruner grabs the pendant and hurls it into the sea, feeling enraged. Later that evening, while they watch for the next attack, Friend hears Anaris and several other creatures mourning the loss of their species. Gruner approaches him and explains that he rescued Anaris as a baby trapped in a net years ago, believing she owes him her life. Anaris vanishes, but Gruner assures him that she will crawl back, as she always does. Friend seems to regret what they did, but Gruner remains cold and has no remorse towards the creature's death. One morning, Friend circles the stones in the sand and places the carved bone in the middle, hoping to get rescued. On the other hand, Gruner is still preparing for an explosion to continue scaring away the beasts, but there is still no attack that evening. One time, as Friend fixes Gruner's mess while the old man sleeps, he discovers a wedding photo of Gruner, with the words, love, 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 written on the back. He recognizes that the woman in the image is the same as the woman in the diary, realizing that Gruner is the former weather official and that Gruner isn't entirely devoid of human compassion. As a result, Friend erases his day counting as he understands everything is forgotten, including the very reason for his visit to work. There is no work done other than to stay alive. Friend then goes into the shore to remove the carved boat when he sees a child sea creature suddenly approach him. Behind the child is Anaris, who appears more confident and bolder together with her troops. Friend notices that they want a truce, but Gruner does not and only wants Anaris back, but she refuses. He repeatedly echoes, no one leaves Gruner. While he walks back to the lighthouse, suddenly Gruner fires a flare at the child, fatally striking him in the chest. Anaris looks at Friend with doubt and disappointment, leaving him alone. As Gruner continues to fire at them, Friend pursues him and after a struggle, throws him onto the ground and stabs his leg. Enraged, Gruner stands and gains the upper hand and tries to murder him with an axe, but Friend calls him by his real name, telling him that he's not a murderer. Gruner comes to a pause, drops his axe, and utters, love, 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 as if the man regains his former self. He goes outside and looks at the starry night where the sea creatures slaughter him.
A few months later, the next ship arrives to bring over Friend's replacement. The captain mistakenly calls him Gruner upon witnessing a shocking state of existence, which he doesn't bother to correct. Gruner leaves Friend with an unwavering legacy of taking his place. The young man keeps his role, thinking that this is the peace that he was looking for. The new Gruner stands by the balcony, staring at several boats while Anaris runs into the sea, where she swims freely. From one hell to another, Friend found salvation. A world war would signal the end of humanity as we know it, but it gets worse. He left one mysterious past behind only to discover the same thing on an island he was fleeing. Seeking peace through nothingness, but in place of silence, he found a monster-plagued inferno. In the end, he finds peace after learning that there is no such thing as life without love, hope without love, or humanity without love. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.